Hi, everyone. This is Brittany Bond. Welcome back to another podcast episode. I'm so excited to share this with all of you. And to begin this episode, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. So by doing this, the first thing that we do is we exhale everything out. And then breathe in through the stomach and then the chest and then your head. So breathe in all the way up through your head and when you get to the top take in one extra breath and hold it and squeeze all of your muscles in your root chakra so everything in your tailbone squeeze with your breath held in until you imagine a golden light coming from your tailbone your root chakra all the way up through your head and out of your body and then let it out And do this as many times as you feel necessary until you come into your body. So I'm going to do it one more time. So breathe in. And hold it. And then breathe out. And I invite you to notice how you feel in your body right now. I'm feeling always juicy when I'm about to start these podcasts this one so this podcast is all about everything (laughs) but the thing that that I was like what should I talk about today and the thing that really resonated with me um, is something that I have been coming into full awareness lately and this is how sensitivity can be used as a superpower so most of you that are listening came to find me synchronistically in the universe because your soul wanted you to hear this message. And the message that I'm sharing is basically that we're all little inner children on the inside that want to play. And most of us are fully coming into our embodiment. So when I talk about being awake... It's like understanding how things work in the universe intellectually, understanding that we are all one in the cosmos up there and we're coming down through this consciousness to have the experience of a 3D reality, to learn different things, to grow consciousness, and we get to choose whether that growth is through positive or negative manifestation, through pain or pleasure, and understanding that we are all completely in control of our reality and and completely in control of creating and manifesting whatever timeline we want. So that's being awake. Being embodied means being able to pull that energy through your body in a way where you are fully experiencing this 3D reality and fully able to feel your emotions and feel what your body is trying to tell you because our body has its own (laughs) activation, its own nervous system, its own intelligence and your higher self, your higher mind, whatever you want to call it, the bigger part of you that is spirit out there that is not in this 3D reality, your soul and your spirit is so big. It is everything in the universe and a very small portion of it is coming through into your body right now and choosing to have this 3D experience. And there's no way for you to be able to hold all of your spirit and your soul coming through this body. Like there's just, I mean, that is... I guess, I don't know, I guess that is possible. It's like, this this is the game that we're playing. This is what full embodiment is, is like pulling as much of that of your higher self and your energy through your body in a way that feels good and you're consciously aware of. Because a lot of people, this is what I'm noticing in the world. The world is run by men, at least up until recently. I think us women are coming into our power and waking up, right? Um, but because it's run by men, it's it's very intellectual based, And so intellectual capacity, intellectual intelligence has been put very high up on something that we should all acquire. And I think that's great. I am also very intellectual and I love that. And that's a big part of my beginning of my timeline was studying law. And I love tech. Like I'm, I love crypto. Like I'm very into, you know, for future thinking and what is intellectually happening. Like I'm always you know, learning new languages and understanding things and da, da, da. like my intellectual capacity is very high. I used to read a book a day. I can explain most things to most people. Our emotional reality is our embodiment. 
And this is something that for many centuries, because we have chosen to grow in our consciousness through experiencing the max amount of separation that we can, and we're coming into, I don't know if you guys realize this, but we're coming into the end of a 25,000 year cycle of exploring separation. And the more separate you become, the more you are grounded in your individuality and your intelligence, your intellectual capacity, but you are less connected and you are less embodied. And so what has happened is because we've chosen this timeline of separation as humanity, um, we've gotten, we've gone all the way to the max of separation. And this is, you can see this in the way that it happened with COVID. Like COVID was the max of separation. Like the, you literally could not touch another person. You were not allowed to be in physical proximity to another person. You had to be by yourself. And there was so much fear that was put in all of us to have connection. And I'm very grateful that I chose the timeline to be locked down here on Copenhagen where we didn't have COVID on the island for most of the timeline that everyone else did. And we were, the, the island was completely locked off to the outside. So you could leave the island, but you could not come back. And we didn't have COVID. And so we got more and more connected as a community here and experienced the opposite of what the world was doing. And so for me, like I had someone this morning ask me, um, when did you first wake up? Like I was talking to someone on Instagram who I probably going to do a podcast with soon. She's amazing. Um, and I said, I've always been awake. Like for whatever reason, my soul chose this timeline. I actually know the reason. I know that I'm here to do some pretty epic big things. So I was awake from the moment I was born. And I just remember being this little alien child, like looking around like, what are you humans doing? You guys are pretty fucked up. Because I came into the timeline that was very separate and alone and painful and all the negative manifestations um and i just remember looking around and just being like what are these people doing they are crazy and always been kind of like always been very awake to like no i don't choose this as my timeline and you know and i don't choose this as my reality but i didn't have the timeline growing up where i was able to feel safe and embodied so especially in the feminine and this is why i feel the feminine power is rising right now because we're all fully coming into our bodies we're starting to understand the power of embodiment and so for me growing up i didn't have this this environment where i could like f i didn't have space to feel my feelings like my my family and my religion and everyone around me was very much like you have to be you have to feel this. Not only do you have to think the way we think, you have to feel the way we think. You have to feel happy. You have to suppress all of your emotions. Like I grew up in a cult. So it was like, imagine Handmaid's Tale. If you've ever seen that show or read the book, that is the emotional reality that I grew up in. And yes, the book is taking it to the max of its own dystopian um, novel and everything. But in the emotional reality timeline, it was exactly the same of how I grew up. Like women didn't have any power. We weren't allowed to share our feelings. We weren't allowed, like it was, everything was monitored all the time. And at any moment, someone could turn you in for not only thinking something inappropriate, but feeling something. Feelings were, feelings were on radar and monitored. So imagine that reality. And I'm over here like awake, this little child. So I just like journaled. I shared in my last podcast. I highly recommend listening to that one. Um, all about journaling prompts and manifest creating your most epic timeline but for me like the the reality i had was i would just share all of my emotions and create all the space i needed for myself to be the sensitive human being that i wanted to be in my journal but because i wasn't able to do that in the physical reality a lot of my emotions just got frozen and like shoved down and and i i call it like imagine your inner child just getting put in a freezer and like frozen like that's how I felt like I literally felt like an ice cube and then I had this like you know ice wall around to me and that was how I lived in the world because I didn't feel safe I, I really I, not only did I not feel safe I actually wasn't safe like I want to validate my experience in that way that I was not safe to share my emotions and and that's okay because now I am and now I'm because I went through that and now I understand how to do this the reason why I'm bringing all of this up is because uh, I'll share an experience that happened to me the other day. So Faraday, my boyfriend and I are um, 
I don't know. We are having a very epic timeline over here of awake and embodied together. So when you have two of these people who are awake and embodied together, like the vibration and the activation is so crazy that we feel like we are on acid or some sort of psychedelics all the time. And so we've been experimenting with taking like, you know, a small dose of acid to see how it feels like, you know, both, both Faraday and I have explored all of the psychedelic realm individually like on our own timelines before we met each other. And so, you know, we've taken high doses of acid and mushrooms and DMT and like all the things and ayahuasca and da da da. And we've explored the spiritual world. And now that we're together, we're just like, um, already being together is a, is a psychedelic trip. Let's just put it that way. And so the other day we took a very small dose of acid, like 20 cc's each, which is a normal person takes like 150 cc's for a normal like trip of acid like 150 to 200 we took 20 which is like normal i've done micro dosing on acid in past years and past timelines and you know i would take 10 cc's or 20 cc's every other day for my micro dosing and i would go and do a normal day like i would just like live my day and i wouldn't actually even feel the acid in my body i would just feel the the way the neurotransmitters were activating my brain like things were just easier for me to connect and like share my emotions and da 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 but I wouldn't feel like I'm tripping you know (laughs) and so the other day we took acid and I we both were like okay so the timeline now is that we do not need this because it was so strong and we felt like so awake and so in our bodies that we were like vibrating and we were just sort of like there's nowhere else to go from here And I felt the most sensitive I had ever felt like in my reality bubble with him. Like I was like, because for me, I'm, I've always been awake. And so the embodiment level, I think it's also being in the feminine. Like we just, we just have, we are here to experience more of the emotional reality, more of the emotional realm. I definitely think that men and men and women can both be awake and embodied. That is not a gender preferent preferential thing like it doesn't matter what gender you are you can feel the feelings if you're a man you can be as awake as you want as a woman I also believe that women's superpower is our intuition is our emotions and our feelings and we usually are the ones who feel things and can connect to them first and then guide the masculine into the same experience whereas like the masculine usually is more intellectually like oh yeah those things connect and then they can guide the feminine into that awakeness more. This is just my intuitive download. You can (laughs) agree or disagree with me if you want. Um, I was having a lot of emotions at the end of of our acid day the other day. We had a beautiful day. We went to the waterfall. We made love at the waterfall. We were just like bopping around, like living our most epic timelines together and just loving everything. (laughs) And also, um, uh, for me, I was feeling everything. And I was just like... I had this moment at the end of the day where I could feel um, all of the pain of all of the women that they had been through and all of the timelines in the universe. And it just like came crashing into me, into my body. And I was just crying, crying, crying. We went to get a massage and I like, the lady like was trying to give me a normal oil massage. And I was, I just, I couldn't even be touched. Like I was in so much sensitivity and tenderness and pain I really actually wanted a massage but I didn't feel that she was connecting to my body you know like when you get a you I don't know for me I know like when I get a massage and someone's actually intuitively connecting to my body and their energy is working with me it's a very healing experience so there's a woman on the island that I work with she's amazing and I like I can just turn my body over to her because energetically I completely trust her and she's really working my energy through so, but you know that woman wasn't available so Faraday and I went to like the normal Thai massages here and the lady was just like it felt like rough like she was like you know just like I don't know I it's hard to put into words but she was just doing things to my body she was not connecting to my body and I started getting more and more frozen and then I thought, okay, awake, you know, the awake version of Brittany is like, I choose my reality. So I said to her, please, can you be more gentle? Can you focus? Can you like be in tune with my body? And she was just like, ah, eh? you know, like not, not in Thai. They say, my cow jai, like not understanding what I'm saying. I speak a little bit of Thai. So I was like trying to speak to her in Thai. And, and then I spoke up again and I was like, can you 
please go slower. Can, and she was like being really super jerky. And I was like, again, you know, I'm like feeling all the feelings of all the women in the universe that just being thrown around and jerked around. And it felt like this physical manifestation because we create our reality physically, right? So finally, I just said, okay, I choose my reality. I'm just going to, because Faraday is having the best massage ever next to me. And I'm like, I'm just going to get up and leave because it's not working. And so I, I go to set up and he's like, are you okay? Like, how can I support you? What's going on? And I'm like, I don't like, I'm sorry. I don't like my massage. It doesn't feel good in my body. And then there's an older woman that was massaging him. And she said, okay, well, why don't we just switch? And then I will massage you. And so this lady obviously had more like mother. And so she switched, she started massaging me. She had more like mother energy and like was like very caring touch and like light and caressing me. And just having that sensitivity be honored and to feel safe. I just burst into tears. I was just like, had my head down, you know, they had a little hole where you put your head in the massage table. And I was just sobbing and like crying. Like, and my tears were like falling through the thing. And Faraday has his headphones on, like, next to me. So he doesn't hear, and I don't care if anyone else hears. And I'm just like, ah! And I was just like, why do I have to be so sensitive and so feeling all of these things? And, like, my boyfriend, who is just, you know, is as awake as I am, and I would feel as embodied as I am, just in the masculine, is, like, having the best time. Like, um, and he's getting massaged by the lady who I, like, couldn't have her touch me, you know, anymore because I didn't like... And she's giving him the best massage ever, in his opinion. And I just kind of sat with that for a while. I was like, this is not fair. At first, I was like, this is not fair. <laughs> and then I was like, no, I don't want to be, like... I don't want to be like a man. I don't want to be desensitized. Or, or I don't say... I don't think men are, like, desensitized. I just think that there's their superpowers are in a different way like we are more sensitive in our feelings and our body and our emotional reality and I want to honor that I want to use that. I so my my thing was not like so I went from this is not fair to I was like what is my beliefs like what do I actually know about the situation and it was there is something to be learned here there is something where this can be a superpower and so we went home and I was still feeling so tender and Faraday was just like, you know, like, are you okay? But not really like f holding me in full presence. Like kind of like we went out to the massage lady and he was just like petting the cat and like doing all those things. And I just was like, I want to go home. And he's just like, uh, we were fine. Like going like, we, you know, when we were going into the massage, we were bubbly and laughing and everything was fine. And he's like, I don't know what's going on because now you're like crying and you look super sad. And I was like, I just want to go. I don't want to talk about it here on the side of the road where it's super loud and, and the Thai ladies are right there. And I don't, it's not even about them. And I don't want them to feel bad. I just want to go home. And he was like, okay. And then on the way home, he was just like, uh, like, can we just like, he, so him and I are so connected energetically that he feels everything that I feel. So once that I have like an actual clear emotion, he cannot run away from it. And this goes vice versa. I always feel, I mean, of course, I always feel how he's feeling immediately, but it doesn't necessarily overwhelm me. But because he has less of a emotional, I don't want, this is going to sound bad, but like, I feel like maybe he has less emotional experience in how to handle these things, like less tools or like emotional real, uh, awareness of how to handle the emotional reality. It kind of overwhelms him. And so when we got back to our house, he was just like, why can't we just be happy? And I was like, I just said to him, I'm like, that is not the right answer to this situation. I'm like, I'm here. I said very clearly, I'm like, I am having an emotional reaction right now. And I'm trying to understand it. And I just need space to like, I just need you to hold space for that. And he was just like, didn't know how to do that. And was kind of just annoyed that I was having emotions because he was like, why can't we just be happy? Or, okay, let me just be very clear Faraday really really loves me and really wants to make sure that I'm happy and okay he just didn't know how to help and then he felt overwhelmed and so he was like I don't know what to do and like we were fine and, like, and da, 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 can we just talk and da, da, da. but whenever I would talk he would just try and talk over me and wasn't allowing me to have space and then I felt more and more overwhelmed so then I just left and I like went to my room and we have two room we have two separate bedrooms and so I went to my bedroom and I was like I'm just going to sit with this. And then when I, I asked my inner child, I was like, how do you feel right now? And I just started burst into like tears again. Cause I was like, I am so I, like my inner child just flashed back to all these times when I was a little kid and I was feeling 
like how other I when you're little you don't like for me being awake and like very sensitive I didn't realize that I was literally feeling other people's emotional bodies so what that means is like I would hang out with my mom and she was really angry all the time because my dad was very abusive and she didn't have the life she wanted and she, of course she wanted and she was also very sad because she wanted us to be okay and she didn't know how to protect us and my sisters and I and so I was just walking around like feeling all of her feelings and then my dad had this huge like pain body and he was just like it was so horrible for me to even hang out with him or be in his energy bubble because it was just so much pain and like suppression and anger and so I would just like hide away into my books and like read books all day long and every time I'd be around my dad, I would just be really irritated because it would just be too much. And he would get to the point where he would want my attention and my love. He, if you know anything about human design, he's a one three generator. So his his um, ego is very, very sensitive. And so he could feel that I didn't want to hang out with him. And, and then I'm like a little kid, you know, and he's just like, he would literally shake me like as like a child, like shake me like a doll, like rattle, like, and just be like, I want you to love me. And what is wrong with you? And why can't you just be happy? And I just be like, what is going on? Like, this is, this is how my inner child was feeling in this moment with Faraday. It was just like this little kid that is like, someone's just shaking them and telling them, why can't you just be happy? And I just was like screaming internally. I'm like, I hate this <laughs> I want to feel all of my feelings and I want to I choose to live in a timeline where not only my positive feelings are celebrated and in, held space for and encouraged and nourished but also all of my quote-unquote negative feelings are also supported and held space for and cherished and nourished because those things those separation from our positivity actually gives us the opportunity to look at all the connection that we have and appreciate this is what consciousness does it's like yes of course we can we can choose to be mostly positive all the time by creating positive manifestations and realizing we create our reality and also sometimes we we choose consciously or subconsciously to <laughs> you know, feel other things, other things besides positivity. And those things need to be accepted and need to be honored and need to be loved just as much as all the positivity that we create in the world, especially as women. Because I think that there's this big part of us that is so frozen. This is how I felt when I came to the island here three years ago, was I was very awake and I had this beautiful timeline. I was traveling all over the world and living all these epic things. And traveling everywhere and doing the business things and community things but my emotional reality was so frozen I thought I had to be good vibes only all the time and when I wasn't good vibes only I thought I had to hide it and so this is what I would do I would like be positive 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 in front of everyone and be kind of the mama bear to everyone and everyone would look up to me and then when I was having a bad day and when I was feeling super sensitive I would just hide I would just be in my room or I would run away to somewhere where no one knew me and I would have all of my feelings. And you know, when I did that and I was in my emotions and fully allowing myself to feel all of those things, that is when I felt the most powerful. That is when I actually felt completely authentically myself because that is full integration, you know, like the point of life is not to disassociate from negative experiences or disassociate from your body when it's telling you something in a painful way. It's to look at it and give it attention and love and allow it and accept it and honor it and let the energy go through your body and ask yourself, what is there to be learned here? Why am I choosing to have this experience? So I just want to make sure the mic's doing what it's supposed to. One second. Yeah. So as humans, we have this beautiful capacity to feel things very deeply and to choose to shift into a timeline and dimension where this can be honored and supported and embraced and celebrated. 
So I'm putting this into all of your reality bubbles because I think so many of us, at least for me, I didn't feel this in the world. I didn't feel a, a reality bubble where my emotions and my sensitivity can be honored. And so I kind of just kept running away. I was traveling, traveling to over 50 countries, just kept traveling and traveling and traveling because it was like I was staying one step ahead of all of my emotions and all of the pain and anger I had suppressed from not having the safe space to feel all of them. And then when lockdown happened, I got in, I had a major heartbreak, like broke up with my, that boyfriend at the time. I got in my only ever scooter accident and I got dengue fever, which is really, really shitty and feels, in my opinion, I've had COVID is like worse than COVID. And I got all three of those things in one month. And then I couldn't, I couldn't not look at my emotions. It was like, I couldn't think I couldn't, I used to be a or workaholic and throw myself into work and work was my safe haven from my emotions because it was very logical and very analytical. And I could just, everything made sense. It was like a computer. It's like, you do this thing and you do this thing. I did, it was a business consultant for remote teams. I would help them transition to working remotely. And I was like, you do this thing and this thing, and then this adds up to this and da, 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 da. There's no emotions in that. And like in a way that's very refreshing for someone who's trying to hide from their emotions. And then I was like, no, I want to choose a timeline where it feels good to be in my body and feel all the things, all the emotions, all the vibrations, all of the energy going through. I choose to be in the vibration of pleasure and always enjoying myself and always having the sensations coming through my body in a way that I love. So this for me is full embodiment is like not good vibes. I, I say good vibes only because it's like a meme people say apparently where it's like, yeah, let's just have it be positive all the time. And this is the only thing I'm going to share on social media is when I'm like fully caffeinated and disconnected from my body. And I'm just like, everything's perfect, you know, and you can even hear it. You can hear someone's embodiment through the vibration of their voice. I have had so many people reach out to me all of you amazing humans and souls who are waking up and coming into your bodies tell me that through my voice, it is a very healing experience for you guys. And or <laughs> sometimes I even hate saying you guys, cause it's like you beautiful souls, because again, this is the patriarchy is that everything is men, <laughs> you guys. Okay. Sorry. That was a little tangent. <sighs> Letting that go through my body. I'm feeling all the things today. Um, so, yeah, I w if you look at, I have a YouTube video where I used to share, I had a TV show at one point where I like traveled around and tried to help people wake up to the fact that they could live their own timeline by working remotely. This is like back in 2018 and 2019 before COVID. And it is very hard for me to watch those videos now, like, because my voice, my body language Everything is so constricted, so frozen, and so in my masculine in the sense that I was not creating any space for my feminine and for my feelings and for the softness that was, that is, that is all of me. Like, f if you know me in real life, you know that um, I have to always have uh, earplugs by my bed because it doesn't matter where I am. My hearing is so sensitive. <laughs> I said that and then I could hear the mic do something weird one second. I don't know. You guys are probably not going to hear that, but I hear everything. My hearing is so sensitive that I can hear like, I don't know, like so far away. I can hear, I can sit in a room with at a coffee shop and hear three different conversations separately around me happening all at once and understand all of them all at once in my head and in my body. Like this is my, my hearing is like a sense. Uh, it is my sensitivity and also my superpower because I also love music and I love vibrations that are coming through music and I can hear them and I can sit with friends who are musicians and help them to <laughs> clean up their vibration within their songs and their sound that they're putting out into the world and just like, and th do this through how it feels in my body to listen to their music. Just like this thing doesn't feel good. What if you change this? I also grew up playing drums and taking vocal lessons. So I love music. But for many years, I will tell you, for many years, this was not a superpower. This was something that felt heavy and felt annoying to me because it hurt all the time to grow up in a world where things were. My dad would have the TV blaring 
like all the time to like crime shows, you know, and for many years he took the door off of our bedroom because, you know, he's crazy and controlling. And so I would sleep at night to listening to that vibration of like people being murdered. You know, it's a reality or it's not a real TV show, but the vibration is fear and murder and pain and all this stuff. And like, that's what I would fall asleep to. And I would just feel like I can't, couldn't get away from it. Or I would go into, um, I would go into a restaurant growing up with my family and they would have like those TVs blaring like the news and stuff. And then I would be like, I asked my mama, can you ask them to mute it? Because like the vibration would get so into me that it would be hard. And then she would ask them to mute it. And then the, s <laughs> the sound of the cable coming through the TV, I could hear the fucking static. This is how I was like, and I'm like, I can't, I mean, what do you, I couldn't, so then I would be like, can you ask them to turn off the TV? And then, and then I'm just this crazy child, you know, my parents are like, shut up, be quiet. And like, my dad would hit me and stuff. And like, this is the reality that I grew up in. And so, <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying. I, so basically I'm telling you guys, like sometimes I, um, mostly all the time I'm doing this podcast, I don't actually know what I'm saying. I'm just like channeling and allowing it to go through. And I have like, a couple notes in my uh, journal here that I've written down. Um, and that's about it. Like, and then here we are, you're just hanging out with me <laughs> talking, talking to you. Um, but growing up, I always knew that I wanted to create a reality where I felt safe and like safety kept coming into my foreground of like, do I feel safe here? Do I feel safe there? How does it feel in my body? And for most of my life, it was just this huge fuck. No, I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe. So I kept like moving. And I think intuitively, I know, I think, I, <laughs> I don't think, I know intuitively that I was trying to find a place where I felt safe. And then coming to the Copenhagen, it was the first place that my body felt safe to rest and to allow it to fully unfold, allow myself to fully unfold into my full sensitivity, my full power. And even then I was trying to work 12 hours a day in the beginning of a world pandemic where everyone else is losing their jobs. I had like the most work I could ever have in the universe to the point where I like wasn't sleeping that much. And then the universe was like my higher self was just like, okay, she is also still avoiding things. She is not allowing herself to feel. We just gave her what she wanted, which is a safe place to feel everything. And then that's why I got my scooter accident and a breakup and dengue. And it was like, okay, I cannot use the avoidance things that I was using like work and you know dating and being like in some relationship where I was like taking care of someone else emotionally I had to fully focus on myself and that was one of the biggest gifts I've ever given myself to <laughs> have all of that pain and again looking back I'm like wow I could have choose, chosen to do all of that in the most pleasurable way but I didn't realize that because the timeline I came into was all of this pain and so I thought, I thought most people think that in order to heal, you have to do it through pain. I'm here to tell you that you can heal and come into your full power through sensitivity and through pleasure. And that is something that I'm like going to preach from the, the rooftops and scream as loud as I can. <laughs> Actually, I don't need to scream. I can just say it really nicely. I think all of you will hear. <laughs> Again, all of these things are so extreme. Like, do we have to do all of these things in such a masculine way? Like, get on a roof and start screaming at people? No. We can actually just be like, <sighs> this would feel really nice in my body to have this happen in a way that I love. I'll give you a tip on manifesting things. I always say, I would like to have this thing happen. I would love for this to happen in a way that I love. So if it's like, um, I don't know, what am I manifesting right now? <laughs> a UFO. I would love to meet aliens in a way that feels really good in my body and that I love. Um, that is actually something I'm manifesting right now. So you can think I'm crazy or you can actually be awake to the fact that uh, to think that we are the only people in the universe, the only sentient creatures, is a very egotistical view. <laughs> um, so for me, having a vibration and a timeline now where I have chosen to grow my consciousness level through creating a safe space for me to feel all of my feelings is 
the most nourishing thing I can do for myself and also the most nourishing and if you want to be very analytical or masculine, productive thing I can do for everyone else around me. Because when you are fully awake and embodied, you are literally activating everyone around you by you being. So we grow up in a world where everyone tells us we need to do things constantly. You need to go, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to like, who do you want to be? But what, what that actually means is what do you want to do in the world physically, in the 3D reality? And I'm here to tell you a different timeline. We can choose to have a timeline where we are fully awake and embodied. And what that means is you're awake to who you are and your puzzle piece that you are in the world. And you're embodied and allowing the energy to go through you so that you're able to create whatever beautiful thing you are meant to create here and whatever your higher self has chosen for you to create here in the 3d reality and by doing that and following your highest excitement of what you want to create you are literally serving all of humanity you are here to activate other people to be their authentic self and the best way that you can do that is to follow what feels good for you and your body and to create as much space for yourself intellectually and emotionally in order to figure that out so by focusing on yourself spending time with yourself honoring what's going on with you and your body you are actually helping set the tone and the standard of how everyone else should do it in the world and this is what I do and this is why people look up to me and this is why people want to have me coach them and spend time in my energy and all I really want to do is hang out with fur day and my dog afro and go on adventures And I want to activate. So what do I do? How do I do this? How do I serve the world by sharing, sharing what I've learned? And it's through this podcast and through YouTube videos and through like I used to do this. The reason why I just started this podcast is because I've literally been doing all of this on the ground in person for eight years. I have been building communities all over the world. And if you know me and you know Remote Collective and you've been to any of my events, you know that my core vibration is unconditional love and joy and service to all of you because I already have it all and I just want everyone to catch up and so they can play with me and so I thought up until recently the best way to do that is to create safe spaces for people to come fully into their bodies and that was a really beautiful timeline and I learned so much by doing all of that and now I'm realizing the best way that I can serve all of you is to share it through this podcast and through the videos that I make because I can reach even more people and it feels better in my body. So I'm activating all of you to keep going and keep feeling all of your feelings. If you want to do it through journaling, if you want to do it through sharing on a podcast, if you want to do it through talking to your friends, through art, any sort of creative expression that feels good for you, channel the energy that's coming through you. And also there's something that I call um, through trauma awareness uh, courses that I've take, taken, they talk about having resources and tools in order to create space for your emotional reality. And so what does a resource mean? For me, a resource is having earplugs when I sleep at night so that my sensitivity can be like calmed down a little bit so that my nervous system can actually fall asleep. Because otherwise I hear everything and I cannot, my nervous system is like, what's going on over there? What's going on over there? And I cannot like fall, like settle down enough in order to sleep. Another resource, if you're watching this on YouTube, I have a candle next to me. I love candles. Like for me, the energy of fire and also it's very grounding. This is how we were like primal, primal, like, you know, through our DNA, we have always had fire with us. Um, It also smells nice. I love incense. Incense really helps me clear the energy around me. I've learned a lot of energy work since coming to the island. I really recommend that. That helps me create a... um, a very protective bubble around me energetically. Um, And one thing I want to say about spirituality is through my, my mother's lineage, um, my mother and my aunts and my mom, my grandpa, my grandma and like all of the women in my mom's side of the family are very spiritual. Like I joke that, you know, even though we were raised in a cult, like they were very witchy growing up. Like we're always having herbs, always like potions, feeling into your body, connecting to the earth and 
I think that this is something that has just intuitively been in our genes and our programming for many centuries. And we are waking up to this again now in a way because we finally feel safe. And there's something about energy work that is very activating for this. And what do I mean by energy work? Like a lot of people know energy work from like Reiki or, and I encourage you and invite you to research whatever, just Google energy work and start going down your own um, path of what feels good for you to start uh, researching and learning more about energy work because all of us have psychic abilities inside of us and in our DNA, we don't even realize how powerful we are and we're starting to slowly wake up to this. And some of my psychic abilities are, I'm very telepathic. And if you know me, you know this because when I'm around friends who are speaking a language that I don't know, I can actually understand what they're saying and reply back to them in English. I don't know the words in English to reply back to them, but I literally know specifically what they're saying and what's going on. And I can just keep following the flow of the conversation and just pitch in in English whenever I want to. Or, or a lot of times I just pretend like I don't understand because I don't really want to participate in the conversation to the point where many of my friends are like, are you sure you don't speak Russian? Are you sure you don't speak German? Da, da, da. And like Faraday, my boyfriend is constantly amazed. I think at this point he just accepts it that I speak, that I can understand German when he's speaking because telepathically I am on the same vibration as him. And so we, I, like his thoughts are just in my head. Like, and I can talk to him even when we're apart. He's starting to be able to do this with me where even when we're apart, he can talk to my higher self and we can have full conversations. And then he jokes like, sometimes I don't even talk to you about the things I just talked to your higher self about. Cause I'm like, well, we already had a conversation. I know what you, you said and da, da, da. And I'm like, okay. Um, and there's a lot of the things that really helped me with energy work was clearing out energy. Like there's energy always happening around us. And we can choose whether it's positive or negative, da, da, da. Um, but also there's like very specific ways that you can create um, an energy bubble around you of protection. And this can be, again, all of this, you know, whatever we choose to believe in the universe is what is created in our reality because we are conscious creators. And so all of this is a permission slip for you to create a safe bubble around you energetically. So you can have, you have all of it inside of you already. And if you go learn Reiki from someone or if you go learn whatever modalities of energy work from someone, it's all of it is activating the memory of something that's already inside of you. So <laughs> you don't need the permission slip of going on a course and getting certified. Just learn enough as, as, as you need to and start talking to other people who are, are on the level where they're finally allowing themselves to remember their, their energetic powers and just start talking to each other. Because one, another thing I'll say about energy work is when you're around someone else who is also open and, and allowing themselves to receive the remembrance of their own energy and psychic abilities, energy work and psychic abilities, you can start picking up on each other's abilities. So I have been around some of my friends and they're like doing something energetically and I can tell, I'm like, what are you doing right now? And then they'll explain it to me and like show me how to do it and whatever permission slip that helps activate that vibration. And I'm like, Ooh, nice. And then I start doing it. And then I'm like, we're just become more and more superpowers. <sighs> All of this stuff is very fun for me. And one thing that I found really interesting is that so many people have these psychic abilities through lucid dreaming the dream state is the state that we allow ourselves to remember our full power and we actually go into our higher selves realm like spiritual worlds and and then we allow ourselves to consciously come into whatever we are ready to receive of awareness in that point so a lot of people remember these things through dreams through lucid dreams like that that moment in between waking up and falling asleep is like one of the most powerful moments especially when you wake up in the morning because you still have DMT at, at being activated in your pineal gland. And what I have noticed is that even though all of us are starting, not all of us, I don't want to say all of us, maybe probably all of us who are listening to this podcast, most of us in the, like, that are the ones that are waking up and coming into our full power, we're realizing we have these abilities. It's still very scary for us to talk about them because there is so much programming in our society that this is something that makes you crazy or something that is, I grew up in a programming of religious programming where that is demonic. It's like, Oh no, anything like that is, you know, from the devil and is a very negative thing. 
Imagine, I just want you to put this in your reality bubble. Imagine how much power is getting taken away from us through this this programming that, that you were either crazy or this is something demonic. Imagine how much <laughs> like we are giving up our power by choosing to believe those that programming. And when you allow yourself to let go of that programming and create space for whatever is actually there, then you will allow yourself to be fully in your power. And it's completely possible. You don't need a coach. You don't need a therapist. You don't, I mean, all of these things are permission sips that can help you. But when you stop looping in this thing of like, I need to heal myself. I need to do one more thing. I need to take ayahuasca. I need to, do, these are all permission slips for you to finally unlock and allow yourself to realize that you are all powerful, that you are the master creator. And when you allow yourself to do that, you don't need those permission slips anymore. You don't need someone else on the outside giving you permission to look on the inside and realize that you are all powerful. And this is the thing that I keep saying to everyone is like, I don't want to be a coach anymore because people are like trying to, have me be their higher self does that make sense like you have a, every single person in the whole universe has an opportunity to connect to their higher self so the spiritual being that is them outside of this physical body and connect directly like imagine you are sitting cross-legged i invite you to do this if you're if you're not driving sit down cross-legged close your eyes and imagine your energy body right now, which is this glowing, well, I don't know, I want to put a color on it, because for me, I have a specific color that it is, but the one thing that I will say is that imagine a golden light, w warm golden light coming down through your head, all the way down your spine, and through the bottom of your tailbone into the ground. This is you, and just keep imagining that, like, coming from like straight up just golden light just coming down through you and going through you all the way into the earth all the way into the core of the earth this is you connecting to your source energy i do this constantly all day long i'm like okay i want to i want to connect to source i want to connect to my deep inner knowing i want to connect to my higher self and i give myself permission to just and it's the reason why we imagine things is it helps it gives us a permission slip to connect to that vibration and so when you hear like a Reiki person or a coach or someone, it's like, visualize this thing. That's actually just trying to help you get out of your intellectual mind and get you on an energetic level into a, an energetic field of a vibration that you want to be on. So it's just a permission slip. So you can visualize it and whatever, I'm giving you permission. You can visualize it whatever way you want. This is why I don't. And everyone gets uh, through all of us having different psychic abilities. We visualize things very differently. And all of it is us as our own master creators looking at creation in a way where it's new and beautiful. And this is why we say like to become your own authentic self, because by you becoming your own authentic self, you are creation itself in a new flavor. You are allowing yourself to have consciousness evolve and become living art and this beautiful version of consciousness, which is already complete, coming through itself in a new way. And this is why all of us have this connection to source energy. And when we go around and we're asking for permission outside of us to, can you please tell me I'm good enough? Can you please tell me that I, can you help me remember my past lives? And my par it's like, we all have this inside of us. We all have this power to do all of these things. All you have to do is sit down and get quiet enough within your inner reality and connect to your own source energy and connect to your higher self. And even for me, like I, I, for, you know, many years, I tried different modalities because I wasn't in my body all the way in order to allow myself to have that full permission. I was awake. I knew how things worked in the universe, but I didn't know how to allow the energy to go through my body. Um, and yesterday morning, I want to share something. Yesterday morning, I woke up and I was like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I wake up at like 5.30 or 6 every morning. It doesn't matter how late I stay up. And I'm just like, ding. And I have all of this like things to share and like all this like awareness and vibration. And so I, sometimes I journal. Sometimes I'm sitting here making a podcast. And yesterday morning, I woke up and I was like, okay, this is my download for today. And it was like the goal of life is not to be fully awake all the time. I mean, this is not the destination. Otherwise, we would have stayed in the spiritual world. 
The goal is to be awake enough to experience this 3D reality and enjoy what's happening in our bodies as we evolve. So I just want to repeat that. The goal is not to be awake fully all the time. I mean, this is not the destination. Otherwise, we would have stayed in the spiritual world. Otherwise, we wouldn't have come into these 3D bodies. The goal is to be awake enough to experience this 3D reality and enjoy what's happening in our bodies as we evolve. So the goal is actually, this is the goal. Listen, this is the real goal, in my opinion, of why we come into this 3D reality. The goal is to be awake enough to be malleable, so be able to move the energy in a way. Like Think about you like if you're making a clay, you're molding clay into a cup. So that's what it means by being malleable. The goal is to be awake enough to be malleable with the energy moving through our physical bodies so that we can consciously create and therefore evolve all in a way that we love and that feels really good in our bodies. So imagine it's not about being awake and taking tons of psychedelics and coming out of your body or like, you know, taking DMT and blasting off into the spiritual world. We would have just stayed in spirit if we didn't want to have this physical reality. And so the goal is actually to be awake enough to allow the energy of source and spir the spiritual world to come in. So this is like being more and more awake to your authentic self and understanding who you are and what you're meant to do and who you're supposed to be on this timeline, what you're supposed to birth into reality and make whatever beautiful thing you're here to create in the world. Because all of us here are here to so create something so beautiful and something so new and and just by being, our vibration is the most impact that we can make on the world. But we have to be awake to understand what that is. We have to understand who we are. We have to feel all of this energy going through our bodies and honor it and allow it to move through us and to create things in the 3D reality. Me creating this podcast is allowing the energy of my authentic self, of my higher self to come through me and to create something in the 3D reality. I'm creating a podcast. I'm recording my voice and putting it out into the universe so that you can listen to it. And through that vibration, it can activate you. So by me being my authentic self right now, creating this podcast, this is the most impact I can make in the world in this moment. And this is also my highest excitement. And this is why it feels so good in my body. And this is why the vibration feels so good in your body to receive because it is my authentic self coming through. It is the most, <laughs> the most energy I can hold in my body at this moment, going through my body and coming out and sharing with you. And when that happens, it activates in your body this feeling of how it feels in my body right now, which is full embodiment. It feels really yummy. I feel very relaxed. I'm looking out at nature. I'm listening to the birds. The sea is right outside of my bungalow. And I just feel really excited. I'm going to go have breakfast with my the love of my life right after this. And we're going to go to the gym. And we're just going to live this like normal quote unquote epic timeline together because we just are so fucking in love and we're about to go on a road trip together around the south of Thailand and go to all the national parks and vlog it and just make love everywhere in nature and just live our most epic timelines because we are literally allowing the energy to go through our bodies all the way and being awake and aware enough to be able to move it in a way that feels really good and when this happens you start having the craziest amount of synchronicities in the universe <laughs> in one day. This is why I joke. I was talking to my godfather yesterday about it because he's also reading a lot of Bashar. And like, if you, if any of you want to listen to or read any of the books that I've been reading lately that are helping uh, me to understand the universe, the structure of the universe, just message me on Instagram. It's my first and last name, Brittany Bond and send me a message and I'm happy to share with you the free Google Drive, excuse me, of all of the things. Yesterday, my godfather was reading one of the books called Masters of Limitation. And he's messaging me and he's like, wow, wow, wow. Like time is so malleable. Like whatever we choose, like, the more authentic we are, the more the energy is moving through us and the more we can consciously create. And then, and then you realize that time is also this construct that we made up. And I'm like, yes, I was messaging him back. I'm like, exactly. This is why like when Faraday and I are together, especially 
like time moves in such a weird way, like from our physical reality minds, because so many things happen in one day. We'll say one thing out loud, like I would love to have this thing. Like last night we went for a walk on the beach and I was like, oh, I'd love to see Afro, my dog. And she was with um, her dog dad, (coughs) which is a whole other story. I love Afro. She's my first hybrid child. And uh, she has many, many people who love her and they pick her up all the time and take her on adventures and I fully trust all of them. And so yesterday I was with Faraday and I was like, oh, I'd love to see Afro. I know she was out with someone else. And then we walk on the beach and who runs up to me? My dog. And I'm like, oh my God, Afro. This is how it constantly is all day long to the point where him and I are like very careful of what we say out loud because it instantly manifests. And this is what happens when you are your most authentic self You allow the energy to move through your body in such a way that consciousness and your higher self is like, she's doing the thing. She's growing. She's evolving. She's just choosing to do it in a positive manifesting way. Wow. Amazing. Let's give her more energy. And then this ecstatic explosion of synchronicity start happening in your life. I say ecstatic because it's so positive and it feels like you're on acid all the time. And then you're like, what is going on? It's so amazing. Like, but in the best way possible, it's like, it's so amazing. And I want all of this for all of you guys. So I invite you to allow yourself to realize that your sensitivity is a superpower and to create a lot of space for your sensitivity and to know that we are shifting into the new era of away from separateness and into connection and into when the connection is the first connection that you can have is your connection to yourself and your connection to your body and your connection to your higher self. And the best way to start that is to figure out whatever tools and resources feel good for you in order to create space for you to honor and you know, take your inner child out of the freezer and let her, him or her thaw out and start listening to her. So for me, I can close my eyes and ask my inner child, how is she feeling right now? And when I do that right now in this moment, she's like super excited. She's knowing that this podcast is going to help all of you guys and women, guys and girls and aliens and hybrid children and all the things and beings and souls in the universe. And also she's like, I'm about ready to be done and go (laughs) play with Faraday. And I'm like, okay, I honor that. Um, So, yeah, I just want to wrap up by saying you are very powerful. You are, you are so fucking powerful. Do you realize how powerful you are? Do you realize? I want you to really like take this in and realize that you can choose to allow yourself to release whatever programming you've been brought up with or you've chosen to take it in that is telling you otherwise. Allow yourself to come into your full power and realize that you completely choose your reality. And when you completely choose your reality, it is not about shoving down any feelings that are outside of positive. It's about choosing what you prefer. So I want to say that again. It is not about accepting okay, this is my current reality and it sucks and I just need to like shove down my emotions that are telling me don't do this anymore. It's about creating space for your emotions, listening to them, listening to your what your body, if you're having physical problems with your body, it's trying to tell you something. Listen to it. Close your eyes, put energy into it and ask yourself, what are you trying to say to me? And usually it's trying to tell you something very specific listen to it, listen to your body, create space for it. Start asking your body in your journal or in your meditation every day, what do you want? How, what feels good in my body right now? And the more that you honor that, the more that you continue to become more and more powerful, your sensitivity is your superpower. And I will say that like, the more that I honor myself, the bigger, the hard, <laughs> I was about to put all these things on what I'm about to say. The biggest opportunity for me to grow recently has been to honor my body with people that I love because it's very easy to go around and be like, I don't want to hang out with that person. They're mean to me. I don't want to go over there. That doesn't feel good. Like to, to honor your body in situations that are like a hundred percent fuck no. Like I don't want to be here. I'm going to leave. It is harder or (laughs) I don't want to say harder. 
in our physical human brains it's harder but it's just another opportunity we can choose whether it's hard or not but it's more of a a bigger complicated challenge that we can have when we are needing to honor our bodies around people that we love so say you have a family member or one of a very close friend that you need to shift in the way that you are relating to each other because it doesn't feel good in your body and you need to speak up for that it's very scary sometimes because it's like, well, what if they don't love me anymore? Like, I, it hurts me to even say this to them because I don't want them to ever feel that I don't love them. But I need, but you always have to go back to what does it feel in your body? Because if you are sacrificing and swallowing something that is an emotion that you need to let out in order to make someone else feel good, you're completely dishonoring yourself and you're taking away your own power and you're taking away your own energy and your inner child is going to get more and more silent because she's like, she's, well, you're not even, you're, him or her is going to be like, you're not even listening to me anymore. I'm just going to go over here and be quiet then. And when you say to, like recently I had uh, a situation where I had to say to someone that I love very much, like I, I, I don't want to relate anymore. I don't want to connect on our trauma all the time and just talk about all the things that are going wrong and talk about all the drama that's happening in all of our friends. Like this isn't, I'm already healed. I'm fully awakened in body. I want to talk about all the things I'm building, all the beautiful things and all the things I'm grateful for. And of course, if one of us, if you and I have this situation where we're, we need each other to remind each other of our power, I'm here for that. Like, of course I'm here to hear all your feelings. But I don't want to talk about someone else's drama and I don't, really want to hear you looping over and over again about your past and your childhood because we are awake and embodied enough to understand that we create a reality and for me at least my my intimate circle they're all awake to this so it's it's like I can enable them which means like I can help them pretend that they're not awake to this or I can remind them of their power and say you know that you are the master creator. You know that you're creating negative manifestations right now. Why are you doing this? Like, can I host you in your emotions? How can I support you? But I cannot support by just sitting here and listening to it over and listening to you loop over and over and over again. And that has been, woo, that was a very hard one for me. And I got a lot of support from Faraday on that. And I'm very grateful to have a partner where who who's always helping me to honor my body because it started to, I can feel people's emotional reality so if I'm hanging out with someone and they're looping and they're just going into whatever trauma that they're creating for themselves or like for me I've had all of the trauma in my childhood and I've chosen to allow myself in my own self to to create the space to really look at it and honor it and let it go through me and let it go and to learn the things I need to learn I didn't I didn't bury it. I didn't disassociate from it. I'm fully present with all of it. And I'm also choosing to live in a reality bubble where I enjoy everything and I'm choosing pleasure and I'm choosing to rise up and become stronger and more powerful every day. And that's the timeline that I'm choosing. And that's the timeline that we all have a choice for. And so if you meet someone and they're like looping in their drama and they're, oh my gosh, like lately I've been <laughs> having a hard time even going out because... I, I'm just seeing this so clearly with people where I'm in a coffee shop and they're like, hi, how are like, I'm sitting there doing my own thing, journaling, really enjoying my reality bubble. And they come up to me and they're like, hi, how are you? And I can just feel that they want me to host them in their energy and their emotions and to help them feel good because people know that I can do this intuitively, even if consciously they don't know this. And so they're just like dumping all of their shit onto me. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I choose a reality where I feel safe all the time in my sensitivity and I don't and again what I'm saying this is not good vibes only this is I'm choosing to be around people who ask me do you have do you have space to hold for me right now is it okay for me to share my emotions with you is this a good moment for you in your body does this feel good in your body to do and then I get to choose whether I want to host them. I get to choose if I have the capacity for it, if it feels good for me, if it's something I want to do right then. If someone does not ask me to do that and they just start dumping on me and start engaging with me, that feels very violating in my body and doesn't feel good. I feel like someone is like energetically just coming in when they're not allowed to 
I didn't give them permission to. And this is something that I'm getting, even for me, I'm getting more and more vocal about. So I'm just bringing you along on this journey. And if you see me here on Copanyang or if you talk to me, please ask me, do you have space to hold for me to talk about all my stuff? If it's something where you want space to be held on, if you just want to come up and say hi, that's great. I love that. But if you're like needing someone to hold space, if you're looping on something and you just like consciously or subconsciously know that I can help you, please ask me first because otherwise I'm going to start being more and more vocal about this. And this, I'm setting all this to you guys because this is me being my authentic self. This is me setting the tone for creating a safe bubble of reality for myself emotionally, physically, spiritually. And I'm saying this all of, to all of you so that you can take this and be like, yes, that's also what I want or pick and choose whatever feels good from this and apply it into your reality bubble. And then when you do that, you activate everyone around you to create a safe bubble for themselves. And this is why for many years, I've always said to my friends, I am a safe place for you to say no to. So if I ask you for something or if I ask you, can you hold space? I want you to say no if you do not want to do that because that's you honoring your body. And that creates a safe bubble for me because if you say yes and you don't actually mean it, I can feel it energetically and it doesn't actually feel good to receive anything from you. Whew. So that's a lot. Um, sometimes I look down and I'm like, I've been talking for an hour. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to talk about creativity and this whole thing. And then I saw one thing in my journal that was like sensitivity is powerful. Being sensitive is powerful. And I was like, okay, that's what I want to talk about now. So thank you for coming along on this journey with me. And as always, please let me know uh, whatever resonates with you or anything that you would like to hear more of. You can directly connect with me um, via Instagram at Brittany Bond. And I also have a YouTube channel channel which is Brittany Bond as well basically just type in Brittany Bond you'll find me everywhere I've been doing a weekly podcast with my boyfriend Friday on his um, YouTube and and um, podcast and I'll put the links to it in the show notes here it's called V Gains V-E-G-A-I-N-S so if you type that in you'll see a really beautiful podcast that him and I do together we've been doing them once a week and now we're going to start doing them twice a week and they're really fun and you'll see the vibration of us together and that's also really beautiful and yeah Whew. okay hope you guys have an amazing day i know that you will you choose your reality you are all powerful you are the master creator i'm sending you so much love i know you can feel this vibration going out into your bodies i hope it is well received and um yeah just keep being yourself be your most authentic authentic self the world needs it the world needs more of it the world needs all of us to be activated in our voice and we can let go of the programming that we have to do anything just be just be be living art you got this okay i love you bye